Hello and welcome to this video about what's new in Examine 4.4. I'm going to take you through 10 new improvements as you can see listed here in the latest release of the Examine application. Let's get straight on to the product so we keep this video as short as possible for you. This is the latest version of Examine 4.4. I'm working on a beta so some features may change before the final release but this should be a good indication of what's coming up. I'm going to start with this file for an iPhone 6 and the first thing that we've done is improve the loading functionality. You can see here there are 12 files, XRY files to be loaded and you get feedback in relation to where the program is and also it's much faster to load. The next thing I'd like to point out is that you can see on the left hand side that we don't have uh, recently opened files anymore. We've improved this to allow for more screen space so that you can see more of the extractions in this particular case and have that information available. But if you do want to open in another case you just click on the open XRY case or XY file button in the top left and you can see all the recently opened files there. So that's a change in Examine 4.4. Also a new feature in the start case page here is quick views. So if we go into quick views I can edit these directly uh, in the start tab here. For example if I wanted to add classic mode as one of my quick views on the right hand side click classic mode click OK and you'll see it appears there. Conversely, if I untick it, it'll disappear. So you can manage your quick views in Examine 4.4 straight from the icon at the beginning of the application. Let's go to pictures now and see one of the major improvements that we've added there. So we'll go to gallery view so you can see all the pictures we've got. Let's click on this particular picture of a car you can see here. I want to show you a new feature in relation to the picture viewer. So if I open this in the examine picture viewer application, just drag that over from the screen, you can get a much larger view of the picture in the application. But if I want to open another picture, I have to double click on it. That will open a second dialog box. And if I open the third picture, so on and so forth, you get the idea. Essentially, you have to open each of the picture viewers for each gallery. Now we've had a number of feedback to improve this process. So we've added a new pin button here. So simply click the pin button and now I can scroll through to the next picture simply by selecting it in the gallery view. A much easier way and quicker way to deal with images so you can see them in a full view if you want to. Uh, great for a second monitor screen view as well. So that's the new picture view. To go back to the normal mode, unpin and then you can see that I need to double click that to open the next picture. A nice little improvement there in Examine. Let's have a look at a new feature we've added. We had some feedback in relation to examiners who had to look at indecent images. So we've made some changes in the options menu and we've included a new option for prevent animated GIF files from being played automatically as you can see here. What I mean by that, let's find a GIF file to demonstrate. So an improvement that we've made in Examine previously was the GIF files if they're will display and visualize automatically. As you can see here, this one's moving. Uh, now, if it's an indecent image, perhaps that's not appropriate. So you'd like to prevent that from happening. Quickly, just go to the Options menu in the Detail panel. Select Prevent Animated Gift. Click OK. Close that down. Go back to Pictures. Start again. If we search for that GIF file again. And now you can see that it's no longer playing the animation, it just shows you the first frame. Uh, it's the same extending that to Project Vic. So Project Vic, we made some improvements in Examine 4.4. Previously, if you selected this button, you would have got a whole host of options. We've now moved that so that the Project Vic button just simply does process review of the extraction. So you can see here, uh, we can filter on all artifacts or just those filtered, select by view. If I do a quick check, against a database we can see no hits. If I do that again let's do it on all artifacts see if we can get a match. And we've got 13 hits in this particular view. So click OK. Examine will update the data and here are our hits for Project Vic and we can select those images if we want. Uh, just to reassure you, this is a fake database, so if we open the picture viewer, show you these are just 
normal images that we're testing the system here um, and you can see that's how the matches are displayed so the images by default are prevented from being displayed so we won't show them until you want to look at them in detail in the picture viewer if you want to change the settings for project vic you can do that now in the options menu we have a new section for project vic here where you can decide on the format that you want to use depending on your region and also now you can add multiple databases so more than one for each region and create a new one or add them here in the options menu okay we're going to clear all the filters using the button here quick update for the time filter we've improved set custom time if I click on that filter it defaults to today's date but also means if you want to have a from and to obviously it starts from the current day it's much quicker and easier to get a filter uh, in recent time uh, next big discussion point is chat view so we have this chat thread here showing a discussion on the kick app with a participant called Johnny Utah and you can see can flick through that now historically the chat view was originally in examine horizon recently we've put it in examine spotlight and the great news is in examine 4.4 we're going to put this chat view into examine viewer what that means quite simply is that it's now free to use for all examine users so examine viewer now contains the chat view for free and on top of that we've made some minor improvements as well uh, you can now see the exhibit ID so you can see where the thread came from. This is from uh, the Apple iPhone 5, which is number six in this case. And number four, just to remind you, that's the reference number we give to the particular exhibit. So that's included now in chat view. Uh, we've also added a new shortcut to PDF. So if this chat view is something that I want to report, I can very quickly click the PDF report button, go straight to a PDF and assumes that I want to print out this chat thread. I can click export. We'll open that folder to see the results. Let's drag it over here. And here you can see the PDF report with those chats. There's the screenshot, very quickly printed out just as you see it there. So, so that's a nice little touch for the examine chat view, a quick shortcut to PDF. Don't forget, of course, though, if you want to do a more detailed report, select the report export option and you can go through all the artifacts and all the different file formats so these are our standard uh, 12 file format exports here and you can choose between all artifacts those filtered or those selected as you can see here and another new feature to point out if we go to pdf perhaps if i wanted to do with pictures we've now numbered the pictures to make it easier to report so just quickly uh, go back to pictures in the gallery view Let's uh, highlight this top row and go to export. Uh, you can see it defaults to selected nine artifacts and I want to do a PDF report of that. Click next and let's go to pictures only view. Uh, we can put eight per page or nine per page. So we've selected nine artifacts. Let's put all nine on one page. Click next. then we can open that up and here you can see the PDF report that's been created and there's the uh, original screenshot and now here you can see we've numbered those individual selected nine image to those pictures that we've selected great uh, one other feature I'd like to point out to you a very nice new implementation of screenshots so now we can take a screenshot of what we're looking at perhaps uh, you've created a let's, uh, let's create a geographical map view for change this is available in examine horizon so here's a picture of uh, several artifacts that have been created on this case you can see there's some pictures there let's take a screenshot of that so I can either drag an area perhaps I just want the map for my report and that creates a picture which can be saved or alternatively I can just do a full screen and then you can see I've got the whole screen there and I can then save the file to a destination of my choice That's the new screenshot ability in Examine 4.4. Great little feature there. Just one point in terms of tagging. You'll probably be aware that, uh, let's remove that one, that we can add tags as a filter and we can tag individual data. So let's uh, go to the view here. I can individually tag files so I can mark these as important and if I wanted to we can edit the tags and give them all sorts of meanings. We've included the option 
now to include tags in the export. So in the extended XML export, the export schema now includes the tag marker information as well as all the other data so you can be ingested into third-party analysis tools. There is a new extended XML schema available uh, from the MSAB customer portal detailing that for your third-party vendors. Another nice little feature, if you wanted to save a subset of this for a third party to review, uh, you can now click on the Save Subset Options and there's a new feature here to include Examine Viewer for free as part of the package so that the recipient can both receive the file and also have a viewing tool to review the data in it. Then we've uh, made an improvement on Call Data Records. If you're not familiar with that, uh, you'll see that we have options here to import a binary file, a UFID file from Celebrite, but we can also import uh, CDR, Call Data Records. If I click on that, a small wizard appears, and this will allow you to import the uh, telephone records from network service providers to see if they match with the data that you've extracted from the handset. So we're going to browse uh, to a demo file to show you, and then if essentially you just follow the wizard click next and it will read the template and it'll say okay select the header row which I'm going to do here and it's going to say okay we think the data starts here which is correct so we'll go next and then select the end row perhaps you just want a few of them so we're going to select the end row here click next and then it says okay data formatting how are we going to do with it and if you need to you can expand this to get more on the screen so you can see what we're looking at here uh, and then you basically tell examine what to do should it ignore this data or should it treat it um, and you can see here we've got various bits of information what's new in this release is that we can now uh, import the call data tower name so we can import the cell tower name classify that and perhaps we have first cell ID here so we can import cell ID so cell ID and cell tower name are two new category properties that we can give to the data that we import along with you can see traditional ones here of latitude uh, longitude uh, perhaps also duration and then you can mark the data and verify the formats as you see here so that's a great new feature in call data records importing and last but not least I'd like to show you a new feature with health data I'm going to close this file down uh, and open a new case with the health data in the app and there you can see the improved uh, feedback on file times and the faster opening times let's open uh, the health data here so I'm just going to move this up and here we've got some health data from uh, Apple Health app there's various files along the way and you can now view the heartbeat monitors and the feedback here's an example we've had a new feature so you can export this a customer request export as a CSV file so here we've got a heartbeat chart that we'd like to export click on the export as a CSV file shortcut you can create a test file call that test2 and I want to open that file call that test 2 and here's all the data in the spreadsheet we just exported it to quite simply you would select all the data and if you're a wizard in Excel you know how to do this and then you can insert a chart and uh, let's insert a chart view and there you can see the heartbeat data visually represented in Excel hopefully that looks vaguely like something that you saw in relation to this data format. Okay, well that's a summary of all the recent new improvements that have been made in Examine 4.4. Thank you for watching and if you'd like any more information please visit our website www.msab.com.